up? Name's Rec, I'm a coach, and welcome to <clears throat> new Overwatch patch notes. Now, just a note, um, I am running on very low sleep, that's why I sound like hell, but I figured it'd be a good idea to at least get my thoughts out there, because a few people have been asking me about, like, you know, somber rework and all that stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and give some insights for this. I'm reviewing this from scratch. So, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you're looking for coaching from me, whether it be private coaching or the VOD reviews that I do on stream, you can find all that information in the Discord server below or at my server, or on my website, sorry, rec9.net. Dear Lord. Oh, All right. So, this new update is coming out at roughly 24 hours from when I've started recording this. Maybe a bit longer. So... Yeah, if you're getting out for all that, a lot of good things to see. Hopefully we'll uh, get a whole bunch of good stuff in there. So as far as I'm aware, the Sombra rework is the first thing. So it's also the new map, Samoa. I've heard Samoa looks quite lovely. I've uh, It is nice to have another control map floating about. But yeah, I'll have a better chance to look through it when it gets released. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing uh, matches from it when it appears in Ranked. Um, yeah, that about covers it. Now, Sombra Rework. So we approach the Sombra Rework by identifying key goals to guide decisions throughout the decision the design iteration process. Make Sombra more committal when engaging. Increase the active feel in her ability to uphold the current hacker fantasy. With these goals, there were multiple angles to tackle around her existing kit. Naturally, many ideas were also meant to address frustrations playing against the character and ensuring there is proper counterplay for enemies. So, machine pistol. So, damage increased by 0.5. There's minimum spread. The minimum spread has been removed, so there's none at the beginning of the shots. Number of shots until max spread has been is now increased from three to six, which is good. Takes in this nice little bit of wind up for you. And the reload time is faster. So I don't want to hear any excuses about not pe people not reloading on this character anymore. If I catch another Sombra main, not reloading in their VODs in the future, you're going to get the paper, mate. You're going to get the newspaper over the head. <laughs> but yeah, it's even faster reloading now. So there's really no reason to, to worry about this anymore. All right. So hack, cast time reduced from 0.75 to 0.65. Now cance cancel stealth when hacking an enemy. Oh, sorry, when hacking an enemy hero. And then the cooldown is increased from four to six seconds. Hack has a reduced cooldown of three seconds if the hack is interrupted or if a non-hero enemy is hacked. The hacked warning text will not only appear while you are silenced and not for the remainder of the duration of the hack debuff. Interesting. Interesting. So hack's more responsive, which is good. It means it'll be a bit easier to to deal, like to at least get that hack out before like people react to you, which is mildly unfortunate for everyone else that has to deal with Sombra, but you know, higher cooldown is a reasonable trade-off, I suppose. Opportunist has been removed though, that's the thing. So the damage buff that comes from this has actually been removed, which is kind of nuts, which now means there's even less reason to open with a hack unless you actually need to silence them. And even then, well, yeah, there's things to look at there. Stealth. Ability rework to be a passive. Sombra automatically becomes invisible after 3.5 seconds while not shooting, using a damaging ability or receiving damage. Stealth movement speed bonuses reduced from 60% to 45%. The fade out duration into stealth is faster. Fade in duration from stealth reduced as well. Cool. Updated the UI messaging for the Sombra player when hacking health packs to reveal instead of detected. Now the message detected is only used when an enemy player is actually in the detection radius. It's cool. Now it functions just per like properly like uh, Evelyn's passives in League of Legends, which is cool. It's now just a pure out thing. 3.5 seconds of doing nothing. Now, the odd thing there is just obviously if like you happen to fire off a bullet or something like happens... Uh, at any point, like you get sneezed on by something or something like that happens, then you are just going to have to roll with it. The dot damage is going to be the biggest problem. 
if you get hit by like a Junker Queen wound or something like that, you were going to have to like roll with this for a very long time, and it's very, very saddening. But there's always a way around it, I'm sure. Virus, so this is the new ability. So it's designed to, uh, assigned to ability one by default. Fire a projectile that damages an enemy over time. The damage is dealt faster on hacked enemies. It deals more damage on impact to a target. It deals 20 damage on impact if they're hacked already. And it will deal 100 damage over four seconds by default, 100 damage over two seconds to a hacked target. So you can melt down people pretty quickly with this. Now, I've seen some footage of the of the ability being used. The projectile is actually quite fast. So if you're within like medium range, this actually will almost guarantee to hit them as long as you are tracking them relatively well. This also appears to have infinite range. So you can like yeet this from across the line. It will travel in a straight line and just go straight into a person. It obviously does hit walls and what have you, so it's not going to go through walls or anything like that. But if you're firing it down the line of the of the point, it is infinite range. So, or at least near infinite. It goes from one end to the other of the practice range is one thing I've noticed. But yeah, it's very interesting to see. It will melt the majority of people, but this now also means that if like you EMP and then virus somebody, there's a, as long as you get a melee on them or at least a shot on them, they will die to that dot immediately, which is good and bad in a way. I don't hate the fact that virus exists, but the big thing is that just based on the damage alone, virus plus shooting someone in the head in, without hacking them is definitely worth it. If you want more DPS, hack a tank, drop virus on a tank, help tank get melted into oblivion. But against the DPS, just throw virus on them, start shooting them in the head. Just go straight for it. There's no reason not to at this point in time. It would be too much of an effort otherwise. Translocator. Can no longer be manually activated. The translocator will now automatically teleport Sombra after 0 0.25 seconds from being thrown. That is incredibly quick. Oh, hang on. Projectile speed increased by... Uh, from 25 to say okay so it's about triple the speed i was gonna say it's like the shortest it's like the weakest like walmart tracer ever but that it, it goes at least far enough to like warrant it being somewhat useful and you can use it at high ground too so that's not too bad reduces the stealth to passive cooldown after teleporting so you can just bounce this off the wall and it will immediately give you stealth which is good the only major issue i can see there is that you will very much suffer if you are being dotted that's like the big thing if you're being dotted it will like definitely hurt the ability to do it regardless but yeah cooldown reduced from six seconds to five seconds the cooldown now begins after sombra teleports to the location of the transponder even still not the worst thing projectile launch initial vertical offset is removed so you can very much just yeet yourself into existence now quick thing if you are actually like watching this for the first time you don't know anything about sombra i would very much encourage you to go into your settings for sombra when this is live when it's live you go in there there is an option that uh basically it's on by default it locks your camera to the direction of your of your translocator you want to turn this the other way you want it so that you can actually move your camera despite that now i believe the option is to move uh it's off by default i think i think just very broad in my head and you just want to turn it on so you can move your camera whatever the default thing is just do the opposite that's one thing i remember they added an option to enable you to do this you need to be able to move your camera while you're doing that so that you can maintain your target if you're using this mid-fight it's very useful i recommend it go ahead and do that <clears throat> if i've got this wrong just remember the opposite of the default is what you want <laughs> is what you want that's it that's the basic of it but yeah this does enable high ground like movement quite simply. The only obvious thing is that yeah, you don't have the setup like options anymore. So you are very much you're committed. You're committed to the fight now. So if you're ever worried about having committal issues before, well now you're you know that the Sombra's in it for the long haul, which means you're very much going to be able to want to kill her off as fast as possible in a fight. <clears throat> However, Sombra very much like runs the fantasy of if you are caught out alone, you will get murdered now. Hanzo mains aren't eating for free no more against the Sombra. Sombra can literally dot you and shoot you in the side of the head and you will actually have to worry now. So, 
I think Sombra's actually got the assassin power that you're looking for now. It's just that, yeah, she's infinitely more committal despite that, and that is probably a good thing to balance out. EMP. Ultimate charge cost increased 15%, health percent damage decreased by... Okay, so that explains what I was seeing before. So they nerfed EMP quite heftily, but your single target killing powers are still pretty much there. But yeah, you, if you do EMP and virus somebody right after the fact, you will still have to score a melee or a, at least a shot on the head in order to guarantee death. I think they live with 30, 30 health or 25 health. So at least a couple of bullets to the brain will definitely save you with that or just let you know just make sure that you're at least topping off that damage at the end or else yeah just gonna you're not gonna get anything off with just the virus on its own it is a overall this seems like a pretty welcome change it does seem a bit sad that opportunist is removed but at least having the the damage buff by default on every bullet is more than enough to offset that alongside virus I've, and the fact that there's no minimum spread at the beginning, which means you can essentially stay on target, and you will do a lot of good damage here. So the main thing I will encourage Sombra players to do is to just try and pick out solo targets despite that. And the problem is now you are very much committed to this, so don't miss, especially the virus. The virus will take care of most of your burst by default. Supports will not be able to react to this in all like low ranks. You will be able to kill off somebody without any issues at all. Just You don't even have to worry about hacking in most of these cases. If you're going to hack, hack a tank and just virus them there. If, you, like, if you're worried about being like shot like in the enemy's backline, just go from the front, hack the tank, and then drop all the damage and viruses on it so that it goes ahead and melts immediately. Group respawn. Okay, these don't apply to competitive mode, so I don't think I have any reason to actually read through this though it is kind of funny people are just going to be grouped together for respawns it's very interesting unranked lever penalties 75 percent xp penalty removed penalty thresholds have not changed but the mechanics have also been complete i've never been completely explained last 20 games played player participated in are recorded leaving four of those 20 games activates the first penalty threshold leaving six of these 20 games activates the second penalty threshold killing the most game modes is now suspended when a player leaves a match inside a penalty threshold. Players that reach the first one will be suspended for 10 minutes, the second penalty with 30 minutes. Q suspension will reapply each time a player leaves a game when they are above first penalty threshold, but not when they complete their games. Consecutive match XP bonus has been renamed to endurance bonus. Endurance bonus is XP granted when finishing matches without leaving the previous match. Cute. So yeah, that's cool. Hero Mastery. Now supports replays. Cool. In case anyone ever wanted to try and VOD review that shit, which I still haven't bothered, so don't ask me. <clears throat> Alright, Hero Updates. Stuff we actually care about. Because I don't think I need to care about anything else there, no. Alright. Arissa Fortify, damage reduction decreased from 50 to 45%. So we are further readjusting Arissa's survivability, which was originally increased due to the armor damage reduction stacking change we made several patches ago. This particular change is relatively light. We still want her to be an effective pick against teams that lean on crowd control. I mean, I understand why it's necessary, because this character is, a, you know, basically unmovable. So it makes sense. Ramatra, Nemesis form. Cooldown decreased from 8 to 7 seconds. The change lets Ramatra project his influence more frequently with Nemesis form, which translates into increased survivability and damage. The flexibility also makes it less punishing if he swaps back to Omniform early to use the Void Barrier. I'm going to be honest with you. The, the more I'm seeing these changes, the more I actually think that Reinhardt's never going to get played anymore. It's, yeah, it's making me nervous. Because, yeah, having a Ramesses form available more often is automatically a big win for, like, those rush comp things, etc. So, something to consider. Uh, Wrecking Ball. 
quad cannons number of shots to reach max spread is increased from 20 to 30 this change lets wrecking ball finish off enemies a bit more reliably when he's outside point blank range and makes him less reliant on his pile driver combos you know what that's a big w that's a whole extra 10 bullets that's nuts that's actually kind of nuts so congratulations wrecking ball players uh zarya projected barrier size decrease 15 percent now matching back to the is this just a revert this is a revert right so Zarya is using the barrier on her allies more often to peel and initiate combination plays, which makes the ability more team-oriented and less self-serving. This change preserves that interesting choice by keeping the cooldown reduced when used on an ally while her target energy sustain, while targeting her energy sustain instead, which has increased significantly with the boost of the barrier health and size. So... The partial revert. I guess that's what we're calling it. Partial revert it is. All right. I mean, it's reasonable, which means you have more like tank variety right now with all the tanks being changed. I do think you're going to see maybe just a little bit more Amatra and Wrecking Ball, but we'll see. We'll, we shall see. Tank mode is a bit of a weird one at the moment. There's a lot of rock, paper, scissors going on, so... Yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of an odd shot to go on there, but we'll see what we'll see what happens as it shakes out. Damage dealers, Cassidy, combat roll, damage reduction increased from 50 to 75%. Most damage mitigation for combat roll feels incidental. This ability is used more for mobility or reloading. This adjustment allows Cassidy to be more intentional with his rolls to avoid large amounts of damage with the correct timing. You know what? If that actually works out to be more than like you, like used for that purpose on its own that is kind of nuts but truthfully i don't think it's anything outside of mobility and reloading at this point most people aren't even aware that it gives damage mitt <laughs> like i tell people that it, it like has that damage mitt, it's like meh, meh, meh. it's a lot of meh going on with it which you know is reasonable it's cassidy may deep chill removed what a surprise this is a terrible mechanic <laughs> endothermic blast uh, damage per second increase from 70 to 100 yeah back to being a damage thing again now immediately slows enemies by 40 percent dear lord we like the ones who combo the deep chill providers that add an interesting layer for hero mastery however in practice it increased the amount of crack control suffered by enemy players while also reducing may's effectiveness just fucking saddening really anyway rather than further increasing the slow or increasing the cumulative combo damage both of which would lead to more frustrating experience for the opposing player. We're reverting Mac to a balance prior to adding the deep chill passive, which for anyone wondering, that means you're hosing, always hosing, almost never using right click unless you're out of range. So just hose, hose and more hose. Get the, get the goods out there. Plus you get that nice, easy slow now. So there's no reason to fuck it up anymore. If you did need that burst from headshotting, then by all means go for it. But yeah, hosing. We're hosing all day. We're hosing all day. I'm sure there's a song about that, but I don't care. Torbjorn, River Gun. Primary fire recovery increased from 0.48 to 0.51. Overload, over health bonus decreased from 100 to 75. Torbjorn's River Gun can feel overwhelming with how quickly it shoots. This change reduces the firing cadence and makes it more manageable on the receiving end. Overload provides too much defensive value, so we're lowering the over health. But I mean, to be fair, that plus the armor that was available on Torb made it freaking hard to duel him. So I totally get why this is being done. So that plus turret. So too too many good things that Torbjorn has. Good ways to anchor down on points. All right. Brigitte, whip shot. Damage increase from 70 to 80. Boo, yeah. Free damage boost for young Brigitte. This change increases the proficiency of protecting our allies while rewarding accuracy with their most aim focused ability. You know what? Cool. That's a good reward. Give it the goods. Uh, Iliari, solar rifle, secondary fire healing per second decrease from 120 to 105. So Ili Iliari's burst healing output is still a little too high. So uh, lowering the effectiveness of solar rifle, secondary fire to bring her more in line with the other support. You know what? Warranted. It's good that like the combination is there for the healing and so on. But yeah, that burst does get a bit how you going if you actually try to use it at the right time. I just keep telling people to go against it because truthfully, I... The healing on its own is piddly, but healing combined with the pylon is really good. But it really depends on how much burst you're actually copping in the long run. So really, you have to like worry about whether that or not that's going on. Everyone's just encouraging to do more damage by default. So it's like, yeah, why the hell not, you know? Why the hell not? 
In addition to the hero bal balance adjustments in this update, we're implementing an additional quality of life settings and additional input options for several hero abilities to give you the ability to custom tailor your experience to playing your favorite hero. So for D.Va, light gun input primary fire by default, relative light gun aim sensitivity 100% by default. Wait, wait, this is for mini D.Va? It's interesting. I mean, it's a bit odd that you would have to like adjust that, but it's fine. Doomfist hero specific options. Swap meteor strike confirm and zoom out outputs off by default. That's an interesting one. Maybe maybe you'd use it. I don't, I don't think anyone would use it. All right. Junker Queen. Added hero specific options. Hide the commanding shot timer. Hold to use jagged blade. I think hiding the commanding shot timer is kind of useful considering it just, it just gets in the freaking way. So it makes sense. Hull to use Jagged Blade might be interesting. Hmm. Interesting. I'll we'll have to give it a thought. Hull to use Terra Surge for Orisa. Now that one I can get behind. Just being able to just hold it down and let it do its thing. I, I rate that. Nice and simple. Ramatra. Added hero specific options. Avoid barrier confirmation input secondary fire release by default. No, thank you. That's a, that's a fucking nope right there. Void Barrier UI is actually kind of like, yeah, I understand why people want to turn that off as well, because you're just kind of throwing it out there. It almost never gets broken as it is, but eh, you're not really going to go crazy for it. You definitely are not going to use a, a confirmation input. But it might be... You know what? I'm curious if anyone uses that for anything. Right, change hero-specific option. Annihilation cancel input options change from ability one ability three to ability one ability three off yay all right reinhardt char out of the hero specific option charge hero charge cancel uh, by default is the ability one button but now you can put primary fire secondary fire or all, all as additional options available you know what i rate that I thoroughly rate that. Any of the buttons available to cancel charge. Yes, please. Roadhog. Whole hog can now be fired with secondary fire. Yay. Relative aim sensitivity during whole hog is now available. Cool. Uh, Sigma. Hero specific option. Experimental barrier UI. You want this. Always keep it on. You need to be able to see it. Gravitic flux timer. That's an interesting one. Uh, Gravitic flux confirmation input primary fire by default. Not really need to change that. Winston, Primal Rage. Primal Rage melee attacks can now be fired with secondary fire and quick melee along with primary fire. Cool. We take those. Here are specific options of relative aim sensitivity during Primal Rage. Honestly, I dig it. Yeah, I dig it. Could could stand to be lower for some of you people that are using high sensors on him, but we'll see how you go. Anyway, Wrecking Wall. Hide Adaptive Shields Timer. I don't think you... Oh, it's 50-50. Adaptive Shields UI should definitely stay on because you, it's good to help out and figure out who's around you. I don't really think you want to change these things for Wrecking Ball. Anyway, Echo. Hero specific. Toggle Glide off by default. Toggle Glide. Wait. Don't people use Hold to Glide anyway? Oh, wait, no. They're just making that default now. That's cool. Secondary fire activates glide on gamepad on by default. Interesting. Console specific. All right. Dragon, again, G, Dragon Blade. Dragon Blade melee attacks are now fired with secondary fire and quick melee. Cool. Dragon Blade timer is hidden. It's off by default. Relative aim sensitivity for Dragon Blade is added as well. Hanzo, toggle primary fire. No, thank you. <laughs> don't, don't do that. All right, May. Cryo freeze, cancel output all by default. Yes, buttons. Buttons being available. Farah, added hero specific options, relative aim sensitivity during rocket barrage and sensitivity during rocket barrage on a gyro. No, thank you. Change, keep it as it is. I don't think it changes a whole lot by default, but if you need it, you need it. Reaper, wraith form, cancel input all by default. Well done. Simple. I like simplicity. Soldier. Here are specific options relative aim sensitivity during tack visor. Why would you need aim sensitivity for a for a aimbot? It's an odd one. Anyway, Torbjorn. 
Molten core can now be fired with secondary fire along with primary fire. Cool. And then relative aim sensitivity for molten core as well, which is very interesting. By the way, the, the changes for Sombra, which are not listed here, is the one I mentioned before. Like I said, that that um, that quality of life input for ter for being able to turn your camera whilst you're in Translocate definitely makes sure that you will have the ability to do it. Just make sure you set that option. It's very good. All right, support. Tree of life cancel input ability three by default. Uh... Hero specific option for toggle war ride is off by the. Wait. Like toggle the button to war ride? Surely. Surely they didn't just turn off war ride in general. <laughs> nah, it's got to be just the toggle for like double pressing when you're at the wall, which is a bit shit. Just use hold. Anyway. Or just turn toggle so you can mouse wheel jump, I guess. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this option actually changes anything here for a lot of you Lucia players. Maybe I'll have to go and double check it after this. Someone can hit me up, I'm sure. Mercy, a hero specific option of toggle angelic to send off by default. And secondary fire activate angelic ascent. Okay. okay, I feel like that one's a necessity just because of how weird some of the movement is on console, so I get it. Anyway, Mo Moira, swap biotic orb, heal, and damage outputs off by default. This is 100% necessity if you are <laughs> if you are uh, on console. Apparently, this does not feel right if you, if you don't have it the other way around. So, reasonable. Although I am a bit mad that they don't feature for like, you know, Kiriko and Sojourn as well, but you know what, it's fine. High coalesce timers at it, yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, you can toggle for Zenyatta's secondary fire as well. Cool. Route 60, okay, map updates. Route 66 design changes. There are now additional places for the attacking team to take cover around their initial spawn. The doors on the first checkpoint will now only be only close one of the two doors after the payload passes, giving attackers more options to work with difficult choke points. There will also be fewer paces to take cover in the later parts of the map. Interesting. Be cool to see how that looks. All right, lighting changes. I've heard midtowns at night now. That's cool. That's interesting. All right, bug fixes. Plays of the game, don't care. Random option for victory poses, not saving. Okay. Fixed a bug that could result in support areas losing the ability to see allied health bars in control matches. Huh. It's new. Fixed issue with the camera breaking during plays of the game with the character uses a souvenir during the play. All right. Huh. All right, so map bug fixes. Watch when Gibraltar is just a camera issue. Junker Town fixed an area the map that allowed turrets to be placed inside the environment. Hilarious. New Junk City fixed some areas of the map that caused players to get stuck. Fixed lighting in areas around the map. Fixed areas of the map that had gaps in its collision. Rialto fixed an area near the boat docks that can result in players becoming stuck. Siravasa fixed lighting on several areas of the map. Fixed some collision on the map that could cause odd interactions with certain ultimate abilities. Reasonable. All right, hero bugs. Fix the bug that caused magnetic grenades to not detach from eliminated targets. Fix an issue, sorry, Iliari. Fix an issue that prevented perfect placement of team from competing in some cases. Fix an interaction with healing pylon and wife leaves tree of life. The pylon should now pass through the tree's canopy. Cool. Fix an issue with captive sun that resulted in a normal primary fire being used if fired at the end of the ultimate duration. Interesting. Fix the bug with Iliari secondary fire that could cause performance issues. Huh. Kiriko, fixed integration that prevented the debuffs cleansed emblem from counting captive sun effects. Fixed an issue that allowed Kiriko to teleport outside of playable space. Again, no surprises there. Wife Lever, fixed an issue where Wife Lever could call out an enemy pedal platform as his own. Hilarious. May, fixed a bug that prevented damage from May's alternate fire from being counted toward the progress of weapon damage emblems. Yeah. Sigma, fixed an issue with kinetic grass that prevented the following abilities from being converted into overhell from Archer's Ravenous Vortex, Maze Blizzard, and Sojourn's Disruptor Shot. Interesting. And Symmetra, fixed Symmetra's footsteps failing to play while crouched. Hilarious. Alright, so yeah, Sombra work's going to be interesting. 
I can't wait to hear all your thoughts about it, folks. So if you're looking for coaching or you're looking for any of that information, we are, we will be open again in season seven. So if you're looking for coaching specific to your you know your favorite hero, or if you're looking for private coaching to help like get better at games as well, all of that's available in the Discord below, or you can find me on my website rec9.net. So definitely come around. Hope you all enjoyed. I will see you all very soon. Love you all. Best to you. Good luck on the grind in season seven. Bye bye.